and good morning. The Lord good morning, bless you. Everybody. Hallelujah. Jesus bless you. Uh, greetings for everybody and, and all over the world. Hallelujah. In, uh, yes. in Europe, in uh, Africa, in Asia, Middle East. The Americas, South America, America Central America, yeah, North everywhere. America. <laughs> right here. Greetings in, Je in the name of Jesus. We have we have a time Lord's of worship to together. We will yes. share together and uh, also a message from Jesus. In Jesus' name. That's right. So rise up. <laughs> Come on, 
Everything Jesus is calling you always to victory. Amen. Always. And I will follow him where he goes, where he stays, where he moves. I will follow.
we thank you that you are Amen. the anchor, the foundation of our existence, of our value, of our identity, of the impact of our lives. It's all for your glory, and it's all built and sourced, not in a system, not in a structure, not in people, not in us, but in yes. your structure, in your power, in your love, in your truth, in your scriptures, God, in your people. But it's, it's not in dependence anything other than you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to. But Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse. People are exactly what you
says, believe that I am greater. Amen. My waves are greater. I'm calling you out to another realm, the realm of the supernatural, to live naturally supernatural. Yes. God says, my ways are not the ways of this world. Yes. There are two ways. There's the structure and the establishment of the natural realm and the spiritual, supernatural, invisible realm. And there's yes. always the force of what is good and God and that he created. And there's the opposite, which is always evil and uh, not good and destructive. And it's the spirit of death. And God is speaking a spirit of life over you, over your calling, mm -hmm. over maybe you're already in ministry, whatever it's teaching or singing or equipping or whatever it is you're doing, God says, I want everything to be out of a source of life and truth. And uh, sometimes people get either lost in the spirit of the world where there's no law, or the spirit of religion where there's only law. And God says, I am spirit, and those who worship me will do so in spirit and in truth with a, with a heart that is contrite to my ways. And then it's no longer us who are leading by experience, but we're letting the Holy Spirit lead by His move, by His wisdom. Jesus is calling you, rise up, Lazarus. You can put your name instead of Lazarus. Yes. Rise up, George. Rise up, Anna. Rise up, Natalie. Anything, you can put your name. Rise up, Lazarus. Today, He's calling you now. Rise up from your grave.
Lord now, saying, calling you out now. Arise. Put your name instead of Lazarus. Come, come out of your grave. Wake Jesus up. is calling you. Wake up before it's too late. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh, everything that you give us. You gave us life and better life in you. So we put everything between your hand, the subject, the message, that you touch your hearts, you transform the hearts, the mysteries of your kingdom, that we can share it with others so they can uh, be transformed in your image, liberated, liberated more and more because you were speaking with parables with people, but with your children you were speaking directly. So speak directly to the hearts mm -hmm. and change them for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I thought of the concept of uh, the soul. Jesus was able to directly speak to the to the disciples from a soul level because they had the Spirit of God already in their lives. They could understand beyond a parable like crowds they were just hungry and thirsty so he had to use parables but because they had the spirit of god they were not completely born again but they had the spirit of god to understand when he spoke Amen. directly to the soul which is the mind Amen. feeling emotion Amen. Amen. So, so the subject will be so the, the, and, and uh, yeah the, the lord will give you this uh, he has given me the subject but I, before we we say anything i believe it's very uh, powerful that as a testimony I share that it's not a coincidence that Monday Monday the Lord gave Albert a uh, Stephen a very profound subject to teach that is coincidentally I know it's not a coincidence but uh, a subject that uh, people approached us about this week concerning teachings and doctrines and a personal um, personal situations so it's confirming that this is a very crucial subject that has so much confusion today. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the subject will be marrying and giving in marriage. So we will read in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, for as in the days that were before the Lord, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So Jesus here is speaking here of 
the sinful lifestyle that people were doing in the last days before the flood came. So marrying and giving in marriage. Jesus spoke about it that before the flood came that people were doing eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. The first one I will speak about it is eating and drinking. The first two sins being committed were not normally considered sin. But in the last days they became sin because of the excess of eating and drinking. In our modern day, these are referred to as parties. Mm, not good. <laughs> not in, good in Luke chapter 12, verse 45. But if that slave says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and starts to beat the male and female slaves and to eat and drink and get drunk, Another translation says partying. Also, we read of this in Ephesians 5.18 saying, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So this is in the last days parties that people are being seduced through debauchery and, debauchery, yeah. debauchery and every kind of excess. Even among, among those who profess Christianity but are living as the world. This is referred to as in the Bible as Babylon churches. So the excess, Jesus speaking, why eating like and drinking? And it's not is the eating and drinking by normally. It's, it's not the uh, it's not the sin, but because the excess, the excess yes. being drunk, being searching to be in always doing parties more than searching uh, God. There were people in before the flood only thinking about eating and drinking. If they think all only about their belly not what is uh, more important which is the spirit the spirit is more important than the body and either you're just a victim in that situation or you can be the one creating that atmosphere so either way it's a, it's an atmosphere of sin and it's it's a surrounding that is not honoring of the lord you know so alcohol which was at that moment before the flood people were always being drunk for that reason when noah spoke about the flood no one believed him. Wake up, wake up. They were so like almost drunk with this word, with the excess of eating and drinking. For that reason, Jesus, Jesus was speaking about this two sin before then the his sins, yeah. the sins, which is eating and drinking. In the in the like way that is not honoring of God. Yeah. So the second um, the second point of how uh, we see the example in the scripture of the term marrying and giving in marriage is um, the, the last two sins, for example, in this passage, in the key passage are marrying and giving in marriage. God originally created the first marriage ceremony in Genesis between Adam and Eve. So he created the structure, the example, the model. And Jesus explains the meaning of holy marriage in Matthew 19, 5 and 6. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be uh, one flesh. Therefore they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. So again, Jesus is he's speaking of God's original plan that from the beginning marriage was holy, and what God himself had joined Man should not separate. So, you know, the question is, why did Jesus say marrying and giving in marriage? So, where was this? Uh, say, were, were they sins in the last days? Were these, like, you know, a sign? Because of the excess of sin made mankind was committing when gathering. So, so the... The problem why Jesus called the marrying and giving in marriage is like a sin in the, before the flood or in the last days that we are living because of gathering of man. He says, who God gathers, no man separate. But who man gathers, it's in that case, the gathering of man completely ruined the gathering of God. It's like the Tower of Babel where the whole purpose was only to elevate man. And it was a disregard for God. 
a ceremony that God himself made to unite a holy way was made unholy by man excessively in the last days. A clear example of sin, of an unholy marriage, was Samson and Delilah. Delilah, yeah. Delilah. It was not his plan. <laughs> yeah, because Samson didn't seek the Lord by asking God directly. Okay, she was probably very attractive and beautiful, and that was all he was drawn to. As a result, he stumbled astray in this unholy marriage, which resulted in eliminating all his strength, and I will say it also affected yes. all his people. And he was blinded by the actions of this pagan woman. It is important to understand the most, that most marriages in the world today are joined by lust. Okay, They're not wanting to glorify the Lord in their union. So this, this affects the whole outcome later, either by opposite or same-sex attractions. So we're seeing it in the world in every way imaginable. Either way, many of these ceremonies are not orchestrated by God at all. They may have God mentioned in the sermon, but it's not the God of the Bible. But instead are driven to marry for selfish interests, you know, a hidden selfish lustful motive, by the lust of the flesh at unholy parties, that's many times how they meet, and the purpose, or it could be in a good place, but it could be a deception and a trap of the devil. And so uh, the purpose of their marriage is not to glorify God and to serve his kingdom. You know, it, it, it can be not only from both sides of, the, of, the, of, the, spe of yes. the spectrum of a couple, but it could be just one of those two, and then the other is a strong believer. And then because it's a trap of the enemy, we don't seek the face of God like Samson should have done, they both fall. Samson, he didn't consult God. He only dro was driven by his driven, yeah. driven by his lust. So because of that, he was stuck in unholy marriage. For that reason, this marrying and giving in marriage in the last days became like sins because of his unholy marriages. Because of the motive. Yes. So this lust that uh, pushed Samson to Dalila. Yet he, she removed all his strength, mm. all his power. She discovered all the mysteries yeah, yeah. and secrets. Because of what unholy marriage. Mm. So, number three, consult the Holy Spirit. Jesus must be glorified. Amen. He must be glorified. The question many innocent young believers, I mean, whether it's young people or it could be non-young people, but they're asking. So... <laughs> You know, what can we do to avoid falling in the trap of an unholy marriage or falling again? You know, the, the, this, sometimes people have fallen once and they want, they are healed or they think they're healed and they want to avoid this happening again. And not partaking of the sin of another person. So, because that's what happens when you fall in a sin uh, with, with someone that, who's already in, in a... Um, how do you say, unholy, unpure lifestyle, you're bringing in that into your heart, into your life, and you're partaking of sin by sometimes indirectly not realizing it. My friend, we must ask Jesus and marry someone with his complete will and plan for us, Amen. not a permissive permission. Is the one you are attracted to drawing you closer to the Lord? Mm, are they drawing you closer to the God? And are you willing to give your life for the other, or are you selfishly in pride or, or fear, wanting desperately to satisfy uh, impure impulses? So, you know, only Jesus knows the future of every destiny and the motives of every heart. Before you even consider marriage, you know, my, my prayer is check your own heart before him. Do you deeply understand the depth of God's love over you through the sacrifice Jesus Christ paid for you? You know, do you know the value, the identity, your value identity as a son or daughter of the Most High? He's Daddy God. He's our father. He's our companion. He's our lawyer. He's our best friend. You know, the Lord says he's your husband. You know, he's the one that cares for you. So before that, you really even thinking understand. about marriage. First, you must put your heart and put with God 
because right, that God correctly. Loves you first. First, you have to be correct with God, and all things in your life Everything will, will be really uh, uh, deliverance. Up. You must have the deliverance of everything. Freedom. Freedom from everything before you think about marriage. Otherwise, you mm -hmm. can easily fall in unholy Trap. marriage, yeah. like Samson was driven by his own lusts and desires, and we know the end of Samson. For, for that reason, God, what God gathers, no man separate. What man gathers, the sins and these unholy marriages comes out. Yes, and God will expose and sometimes uh, separate evil from holy. But it, it, it certainly depends on the heart condition of the person. God is always a, you know, one of freedom to give us the liberty of the will. So in order to avoid entering a chained, unholy marriage and to the contrary, allowing God to unite you in a holy marriage with the one he has planned for you, joined by God that then no man can separate, we must ask Jesus. Jesus. So only the gathering of God is considered a holy marriage. For that reason, Jesus spoke about the last days before the flood and his last day that we are living, that marrying and giving in marriage became like sins because of these unholy marriages. And, and it also includes people that have started in the wrong path and that later, you know, in their marriage, they will seek the Lord. And in those situations, sometimes both people will be completely transformed by the power and the love of Jesus Christ. And sometimes only one will and the other will become more wicked. <laughs> and so, that's where we're going to talk now. So for that reason, God put it in my heart, and uh, Melody also, to speak about the subject because there is too much, there are too much confusion. Too many Too confusions. many confusions in the world, between believers, between churches. Because of that, they had, God put it in our heart and this mystery of the kingdom to help you to know the truth, and the yes. truth will set you free. Yes, because God's intent in all of the sin in this world is for people to repent and be healed. Or sometimes you're a victim of a situation, but God wants you to be restored and healed so that you can help other people yes. and be living and not just surviving, but actually living and like a tree bearing fruit. Amen? And because we passed also this, some of these situations, yes, God our opened our mind to understand the meaning, the revelation, the revelation yes. and the mysteries of the kingdom so we can help, help other others people. to also be set free from everything that God's not, it wasn't for the beginning, uh, joined Amen. by God. And it's, and it's a combination of the scriptures, but also the Holy Spirit prophetic insight as to what he is wanting specifically from our decision, from our life, from our heart. Number four, uh, the divorce. So, divorce is something, uh, me, I, I live in the uh, Middle East, it's like a crime. It's, a, it's not a good word. <laughs> <laughs> not even, you must even Don't mention it. Mention it. Don't mention it. It's like impossible to speak and, and the act itself is something that the effect is something God hates. He hates the effect of that. God hates the act and the effect of divorce. Because in the last days, unholy marriage marriages increase the divorce rate. With, with it, will also become very common. So, except for we see adultery and severe danger, we see these exceptions in the scriptures, we don't have the right, actually, to just, you know, marry and divorce and marry and divorce. It's not a, a, an, an honorable thing before the Lord but something without coming to Him, you know. And even in the case of adultery, and it, uh, so where it has been repented of, we must forgive. God God asks us in every aspect to always walk in forgiveness. You know, whether it's praying and fasting for that person, whatever it may be. This is such a life-changing decision in that we must ask, we must ask Jesus everything. Not only just, you know, pastors, counselors, peoples, friends, uh, co-workers. You know, God says, call, ask me. Only Jesus knows if the adulterer, the husband or wife, would repent. And in the case of no repentance, we have instruction in the following passages 
we're going to read in 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 17, you know, and instruction, uh, and also in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 15, uh, you know, some guidelines. But it's the Holy Spirit that would lead you to continue to pray for that person, pray for your own heart for healing, and and in any case, let the Lord show you so in case of a dangerous repent situation. Un unrepentance or no repentance of the person, in that case, God says to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. In 2 Corinthians, yeah. yeah. Why, now, come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord, from something that is evil and wicked. We're talking here. This is very dangerous, okay? And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So, like we said, God says, come out and don't touch unclean thing. If the person, be uh, if the other person is being husband or wife, which is living in adultery and he doesn't want to repent, in that case, Jesus will reveal you, he will reveal you everything, and he says to you, don't come out and don't touch anything unclean, and I will receive you. Right, and the, the position in, in this uh, situation is prayer, fasting. The Lord says, I'm going to look at your heart. You come before me. Okay, you um, bring that person in prayer before the Lord, but you don't trust and partake of that sinful lifestyle with them because then the Lord says, I will reject you too. Amen. And in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God call, call, has called us to peace. Amen. So, you know, we see it's only Jesus that has the answer of what you must do, of what anyone must do, in the case of adultery or when the unbeliever departs. And we're specifically speaking to mature believers on one of the two spouses. So, so this is what the Lord uh, revealed me. To it's me. not the first option in any problem in case of adultery no. or in case of uh, the other and ones. The says, he's, no. not, he's not happy it's with not your faith. Choice. It's not the first option is the divorce. Mm -mm. First, we must ask Jesus, Always. we must fast and pray, Always. ask his counsel before any all man. All because you can ask any man and gives you a, a, what, a, the opposite what Jesus will say yeah. to you. So when, if, when you ask Jesus, the culture. When you, because of the culture, because of the person, because of their doctrines, Jesus says to you, ask me and I will reveal you if the person or the husband or wife, uh, adulterer, will not repent or will repent. So you have to wait. In that case, you separate and you wait till that person repents. If the Lord really jo Jesus shows you and that the person will repent. But otherwise, you have to come out of them and be separate, say the Lord, and don't touch unclean thing and I will receive you. And, and I see that's the, the importance also of how the Lord said, you know, we shouldn't be attracted to a member of our family more than to him. That is why he says, I am God, I am the I am, and when you come and you worship Him, then automatically you will recognize when things are not in line with Him, not just in our own lives or in our own hearts, but uh, especially those that we care for. And, you know, God says, be separate, be set apart, be away from what is not good in the aspect of your intention, of your motives. Yes. Because if, if we don't do this, there are two extremes. Someone will be in a, you know, maybe an abusive situation, which is what I was in. I had a protective order. I had a name change. I had miscarriage. I had all these things happen. Yes. And in uh, Albert's situation, it was almost a death, not a threat, a but it was an indirect threat. And it was a long adultery that was not abandoned, which actually ended up in that person marrying the adulterer till this day, but it was something where the Lord said, you need to be holy. As I am holy, you need to be set apart from what is evil, from what is dangerous and wrong and wicked, you know, demonic activity. And he says, you know, if you don't seek the Lord, automatically your life, your conscience, your soul will be sucked into this wicked world and you become to fall. Yes. You, be you become a fallen believer 
into the ways of this world. Your conscience is burned, <laughs> you know. As soon and before you know it, you have no recollection of what is right and wrong. And God says, I won't accept you in my kingdom if you don't seek my face. And the other aspect is people making a quick decision and ending a situation that God said, no, you are there for life. If it's not a threat or an adulterous situation, you are there to forgive, to love, to be a companion, to help, to encourage. If there's something that's very confusing, God is going to reveal the source uh, of the issue. Sister Mary K. Baxter, about the revelation of hell and heaven, she saw a person that didn't forgive the, the, the husband, the, the husband, yes, forgiveness of her husband. And so the person was, because he didn't forgive, program. he brought, had that sin stays on him because the, the, her husband, he really repented, but she didn't want to forgive, so she saw her in hell. So Mary K. Baxter revelation, you can watch it and you know. So even the first thing happened to, to me when I knew that uh, the, the mother there was of, an adultery. Uh, yeah, the adultery, the mother of my children, I didn't take the first option, which is the divorce. No. No. The prayer, first thing, fasting, prayer, fasting years. and prayer, years, uh, for almost a year, I gave Jesus, said, Lord, please show me if she will repent or not. If I have to wait, I will have to separate. And I did the same thing, so I then, prayed and fasted. And then, then Jesus <laughs> revealed me that a living dog is better than a dead lion. So in that case, the Lord took me out of that unholy marriage. So because... And, and almost death situations situation. on both ends. Yes. So number five, the which is the more <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a it's a deeper level because I mean, before we say the word, I think it's important that we note that uh, some people will find themselves either in a trapped situation that was actually planted by the enemy, which is what we both had because the calling, just like Samson, was a calling to impact God's kingdom, God's ways yes. in his generation. We want to liberate. And the objective was to kill Israel. that person. So, you know, if you find yourself at that spot where, you know what, whether I was a believer or not a believer and I committed the act of divorce and God says, you know, when you come to me, I'm going to heal and use every detail, every aspect of your life as a ministry platform for others. Yes. But before you reconsider yes. if there, you know, if you found yourself in this place, and you would consider, like in our case, remarriage. There are some teachings that are so extreme. I'm not saying necessarily in this country of the U.S., but in other countries and other places, there's a lack of knowledge. And so it's so extreme that there's either one side of religious law that prohibits the word now that we're going to say is remarriage, or that just liberate, you know, in the passage that we're, a key, the key passage that we're talking about today is there's remarriage everywhere with no counsel from God first. So if you want to marry again, the word remarriage doesn't exist for God. Never. It never mentioned in all, from the beginning, from Genesis till Revelation. You don't find the word You there. find the word, word remarriage. So why? There's a reason why. You were either in an unholy marriage or married on a vain foundation. So in, in the in the previous situation, many times. So it's it's you know it's not acceptable for the Lord for a double, triple, you know, all these things. God says no. There's nothing nothing exists in marriage. Remarriage, it's all if you are in unholy marriage, you are not married even. Because you are not married by God. You are not joined by God. So I would so call it illegitimate. Illegitimate marriage. <laughs> yeah. So you were not even married for God. You were married by man. Yeah. Which man it's gathers. Amazing. For that says, which man gathers, God separates because of these unholy marriages. Mm -hmm. Unholy fornication, lust, or same-sex marriage. In Psalm uh, chapter uh, one, one, uh, 127, First, uh, first, uh, verse. Verse, one. verse one. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Right? So, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes but in vain. So, this is an example, example of a home, a house, is one that has built in vain. It's been built in vain, yeah. 
because it wasn't by the uh, you didn't counsel, cons of God. counsel of God or you didn't ask Thank Jesus you. Yeah. you didn't pray enough so God happened with me I was completely blinded like Samson I didn't pray as Jesus so I ended in unholy marriage which engendered the adultery and the divorce in the end but which, which actually at the beginning both in your case and mine was someone appearing to be a strong believer in yeah, the congregation she was, or a she Bible was in the school. church I mean, she was baptized way, in the church she was, was the a congregation yet was the Bible school but either way it was somebody that appeared to be okay and had deep rooted sins that could have been changed and truly repented of, but the person chose to become worse in both situations. So, so on the other hand, when you marry with the guidance and permission of Jesus Christ, and you are trapped in unholy union on the action of other individual, you must ask the Lord what to do. You must be directed to pray fast for this person or completely separate that unrepentant adulterer. Mm -hmm. From that person, yeah. If after years the Lord affirms you that you are, you end the unholy union, and years later you are to marry again, obeying the will of Jesus Christ in his perfect purpose for you, it will be called a, a holy, holy marriage. Marriage. Not a, a remarriage. A God marriage. Doesn't God exist honoring, remarriage. It is true God. marriage. This word is not even uh, mentioned because God's only one marriage it exists which called holy marriage mm. which God gathers no man separates Amen. it's only the blood can separate the person from the other Amen. from a human standpoint it's called a remarriage but God, from God's views and original holy union plan it's a holy marriage we will read in Matthew chapter 19 verse 9 and I say to you, whoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her, which is put away, does commit adultery. So Jesus is giving the right to put away divorce only in the exception of fornication or adultery. And the believer shall not marry a person who was separated for fornication and has not repented. Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery in the temple, Go sin and no sin no more. And that, in Jesus' name. In the case of true repentance in Jesus Christ, everything can be resolved and the marriage Completely, can be restored. Totally. Restored, which is unholy, can Hallelujah. be transformed for an, from unholy marriage to a holy marriage. That's right. So even unholy marriage, can which is gathered holy. by man, can become a holy yes. if we pray and ask Jesus. Because only yeah, Jesus. like the, the word redeemed. God can redeem it. He can change and transform it. But except, it. except for in the cases where there is a plan contrary to his model, which is a man and a woman. You know, where there's someone, you know, I've heard testimonies of people that had uh, been set free from satanic uh, ceremonial, you know, things or things, like, that, things like that were like, like, you, like uh, one. well, that was somebody else. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, he had actually some other testimonies, uh, which was uh, anger issues and, and um, uh, how do you say, substance abuses and things like this. So either in that situation where God will actually marry them and they will begin to serve the Lord and then be healed even more and then their life impact other people. I've also heard in the contrary of somebody that was either married to the same sex or married to somebody that was very wicked, or they themselves were very wicked, and then their life changed, and because of the level of their change, the other person did not come to the Lord. They actually became worse. And so that's when God said, okay, um, be set apart. Yes. And that's when the person becomes, the other person that's doing what is wicked and evil before God becomes worse, and God says, I've called you to holiness. So holiness is more important than reputation. So only can Jesus restore and uh, transform the unholy marriage to holy marriage. Amen. So everything is possible. Nothing is impossible for God. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask Jesus in everything. Everything, everything, every uh, uh, small details, everything that we have to do in case of divorce, remarriage, everything is Jesus. The answer is with Jesus, not with yes. man, my friend. 
Yes, and, and, and the, the devastating situation is that many times the most vulnerable, vulnerable are people stuck, our children, our young ones. But if we don't realize that if we uh, shelter, if we do not shelter a victim or a child of a, of a wicked and, and evil surrounding, that will affect not only their surrounding and their life, but generations to come too. So we're we're actually needing to do what is holy and right and secure. We're talking about extreme situations, especially, and adultery. But it's in these decisions that we will preserve not only our our home but generations to come too. So number six, religious and worldly confusion begins the truth from Jesus. When I asked Jesus about all these things. He revealed a clear understanding to me about unholy marriages, divorces and remarriages. The key passage of Matthew is people surrounded with confusion from worldly Babylon churches, both freely marrying with no counsel from God. Two extremes. And also religious tradition, many forbidding marriage, like the Catholics. The other side. <laughs> after divorce, except for reason of adultery when the unbeliever departs. I asked Jesus which of these two which one of the approaches two are better, was correct. correct. Jesus told me neither one, neither this, neither. nor that. So what should we do? Mm. Jesus said to me, I leave them all in confusion yep. because they are not willing to listen to me and instead yep. they seek only worldly tradition or religious roles and whatever is itching to ears and dependence uh, on man. Mm. The only thing my Jesus. real followers must do the only way is to be by asking me for permission in everything i am the word of god the almighty god it's only i who has the solution key to everything amen hallelujah and it is it's the lamb the i am that has not just the first word alpha but the final word omega amen so that's why we need to seek him Number seven is focusing on him because he has the answers. He has the final word. He has the unlocking of kingdom mysteries that, you know, generations sometimes still struggle to understand from centuries back till today and still are in confusion, especially if it's driven by philosophy or, or experiences or opinions instead of the heart of God. So the blood of Jesus covers a multitude of sins. And we're speaking to both the side that suffers, the side that is oppressive, and sometimes there's people that are on both sides together. They're, they're hurting and they're, they're hurting because of hurt and they're hurting others because of it. You know, hurt people hurt people. So if you, a family member or someone you know fit any of these, which we know is, is unfortunately a big problem in society today. Our testimonies are living proof that God's resurrection power can transform a situation that seems to be on a death, you know, line bed. <laughs> and then God can say, hey, rise up. You know, I've called you to remember when you were a little kid and you were called to, you know, a kid meaning like we were both 19 to missions, rise up. <laughs> so he's saying, uh, you know, if you find yourself in the descriptions of what we've talked about today concerning the message, it is not an accident. Jesus came to save and set sinners free of sin. That's the most important thing that everything is based on and everything that we're talking about today. Jesus sets sinners free and he sets the hurting people free of pain and heals them. He loves mankind so profoundly that if anyone receive his ransom, oh Lord, out of love for them and completely trust him. That's the key thing. He wants you to be healed. You know, when I was actually uh, set apart, when God said, you need to flee or you're going to die. You know, this happened the same year, 2004, that God had completely healed me emotionally from a lot of disturbances that I had had as a child growing in a cult and then being in, you know in a horrible you know rape situation for years and a you know I won't get into all the details but it was horrifying I hadn't completely healed of these things I thought I had so I was actually performing 
in prisons, in nursing homes, even in mission trips because I was trying to find value. And it wasn't until 2004 that Jesus revealed truly his love for me because of what he had done on the cross and not what I had to do to merit that. So he wants you to understand today the most important thing to avoid traps set by the enemy that are not just an appearing good plan, but actually God's best plan for you is understanding his love for you first. And then you'll have his Holy Spirit discernment to recognize when he speaks. Um, he no longer sees the sin when you come to you and when you come to him and you see that love that he has over you that it's completely covering you and you trust him he doesn't see the wrong you know you confess it you put it at the altar the person is as white as snow before the cross of the lord you know he, he just says okay this is my child they've brought everything before me i have paid the price through jesus christ and I love that child. Even before the, 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 the wrong was placed before the altar, whether it was something that was done to you or something that you did, God says, bring it. Bring it to me, and I will redeem your life. He is a God of miracles who gives his spirit. He heals the soul and saves the person, the body. So he, he is the dimension of spirit, soul, and body. And we have to understand this. If we don't comprehend the difference between Submitting our life to him and our spirit is completely one with his Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And then our mind, will, and emotion, which is the dominion of soul and heart, which is the same word, but it's expressed in different ways. It's, you know, the desires, the will, the feelings, the emotions, everything that is tied into what we want. But if that's submitted to his spirit, then that's going to give glory to his spirit, to the Lord. And then our life, our body, our physical appearance, meaning the fruit of our life, is not going to be rotten sin. It's going to be glorious kingdom fruit that will bring a harvest for his generation, for his name's sake. So what I wanted to, to uh, repeat or to say to young people and uh, for all people that really thinking of marriage or anything before, you think about going further first ask jesus ask, him. ask and pray seek the lord if you are a, a woman ask him god who is adam that you prepared for me because godly god, man god prepared Truly. for every adam eve for man every eve adam yes so god woman will show of god you. for the man of god so god will show you who is the the, the real person which god uh, chosen set apart for, for set you. apart for you and don't uh, uh, anticipate God's uh, project or plans in your no, life. No, don't run ahead Live, of God. Pray fast <laughs> and pray, him. and He will Trust reveal him. you the day comes Trust in His, his time. In yes. His time, always seek in His time, and don't uh, go faster than the wind. But <laughs> ask always Jesus and wait for him because who wait for who trust the lord mm -hmm. will lift up wings uh, yeah, uh, eagles, eagles. They'll get their reward. wings like eagles so <laughs> you will have uh, an answer from jesus so you won't enter in You're unholy marriage in, in unholy marriage or uh, the person that you have not, it's not chosen in by god even yeah. if it's a believer but it's not chosen by, by god for you it can also have uh, some effect uh, yeah in your life then one one is called and that is not called one is wants to preach the other not so god knows who is the right person for you yes so and, and and even if you are young and you find yourself in that situation god can still heal both of you he can heal not just you who are born again in things that were maybe wrong in your past in your childhood or who knows at what point but he can also completely bring that other individual um, spouse, especially, to repentance. Yeah. And if you're not married, for God's sake, cut that relation. That is evil. It's yeah. sinful. Especially and it's bringing wrong to your life, to other people around you. It's not good. That's, that's why it's in the Bible. Why would it be a fornication or abomination if it weren't destructive for you and other people? The New Age thinks... They call it boyfriend, girlfriend, all these things. It can take you to fornication, my friend. If there's not a commitment. So sort, yeah. don't, don't be stuck first with a person like 
Samson will start with Dalila before then he will enter in this unholy marriage. Yeah. So the 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 situation that can takes you or to push you to unholy marriage. Opening a door to a, yeah. um, an impure lifestyle. But what is also key is again knowing the power, the love, the unconditional, you know, redeeming love of Jesus in your life so that you can seek the Holy Spirit all the time. And when you are healed and whole and healthy spiritually and you have discernment, then you know when God is speaking to you and you're not moved by the appearance of the exterior. Yes. And but even, the heart. even if you are stuck in unholy heart marriage, God, God can restore that heart. marriage, yes. that marriage to become holy. If you pray, because if the other person is not in adultery or anything, you all, like Paul said, if he's willing to stay with you, pray for him. Right. God can Forgive. transform that uh, unholy marriage restore. to holy marriage Amen. and can change transform. everything. Nothing is impossible for him. Amen. But always asking Jesus Ask first Lord. because he has the good answer Seeking. and the correct answer with him. Don't judge people uh, that they are in Amen. these problems. Amen. Don't judge them. Only peace. pray for them and God will reveal them what to do. Yeah. It's not your opinion is important. It's or God's battle. opinion is important. Yes, it's the Lord's battle. You know, he says, you come to him, important. let his peace, you know, govern every element of your life, every aspect of you. And that is in that peace, in that serenity, in that counsel of the Lord's voice and his will and his scriptures and godly people. I'm not talking about just religious or worldly. You know, both can be on the totally extreme side of doing whatever you want to do or not doing anything ever, you know, uh, if you were, say, in my situation. I, you know, many years ago, I had somebody say, oh, uh, you have been married in the past. Uh, I know it was abusive, but you can no longer ever marry. You know, I know that was not of the Lord. So, But there are extreme, you know, extreme uh, views that, that are not... That gives the permission. The permission yeah. comes from Jesus. Yeah, if you he can marry again or he not. He has the original plan. And this was God's original plan. And, and your uh, means that if you are the thinking of self-righteousness, what help people to become more holy, but in that... In the no blood of Jesus Christ, the cross, is the redeeming source for mankind. So it's not... The effect of what we have done or not done that makes us better or worse than somebody else. It's the power of the cross Amen. in Jesus' name. And because of the revelation of his love for us, we're going to honor, we're going to give a dignified testimony of our life, of his love for us, and conditionally, from that point on. And, and not abuse the love of, of God, of Christ, by doing whatever we want to do and hurting many, many people on the way that we don't so realize. So if you are facing uh, a divorce or anything that really hurts you, you have to have a brave heart and to go to Jesus and he has the, all the solutions and the keys and the only permission for everything, it's him. Don't look, don't listen to man, mm -hmm. listen to Jesus. Man. He has the right Either answer. man, the, you know, mankind that is influenced by the the lawlessness of uh, our society or only or, law or self-righteousness uh, which is many people you know, are teaching a, a pharisee a traditional structure that especially we find in different nations that that have one view and one view only you know a holy spirit is living and god says you know yes the scripture is on paper but you need to seek my face. The Lord says that when you seek my face, your heart is changed. And because he came on earth to be manifest through mankind, you know, if we don't have the revelation of God active, alive in us and through us, then it is just a belief, a structure, a system that has no effect on bringing change to people's lives or purpose or identity. And so... Yeah. It is We're blessing, so we have uh, still also the, we have the French and Spanish. Amen. Jesus. So the, 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 this this uh, teaching is actually an invitation for for God to uh, bring comfort. I think is the key word, bring His peace. You know, because you have so many voices shouting so many different things all around you. God says, "I want my peace and my counsel to govern you." Amen. You seek His shelter and His comfort. 
and also for conviction. You know, the, God has brought conviction even when I was in my healing process out of this situation that I was in so many years ago, and, and uh, Albert as well, you know, things that God said, you know, even the way you understand something is wrong. So bring that before the altar too Amen. and say, God, help Amen. me, change me. Okay, thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. Now uh, we put uh, everything that we spoke about being in freedom in the, so we can listen to your voice, change hearts, change minds. So we give us a brave hearts. Lord, so we give can, us brave hearts. Uh, yes, yeah, we Lord. Can, we can uh, face our own problems only through your power of your Holy Spirit yes. and the power of your holy fire in us. So we can uh, always ask your counsel mm. and you, have, you will start. give us the right answer and the right time and uh, set us free from all self-righteousness, all things that mm. can take us to Fake. one opinion or our opinion. Oh, it's only your opinion that counts in our life. Yes. Otherwise, all opinions can take us away from you. Yes, we Father. Jesus name. We thank you also that you create in us, Lord, a heart that is genuine after you, that you give us, Lord, your heart, that we represent a vessel to your glory, not um, created with the pride of man or the shame of man, but God, that you would make of us, Lord, an example and a vessel of life and of transparency, that there is nothing that we'll ever be ashamed of because we have hidden everything in the blood of Jesus and we have let you heal the things that were unjust, either that other people caused or that later we didn't understand in the confusion that we created at some point. We thank you, God, that our life is a transparent testament to your glory. For John 3.16 says, You so love the world that whoever would not just believe in you, they'd be set free and be saved. You know, because you came into the world, verse 17, not to condemn the world, but to save it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we pray blessings over you this week, and wait till next time. In Jesus' name.